Hey everyone, welcome back to Celluloid Consomme. Uh, I am Andre Couture and I am extremely excited to have um, talking to me today about Fist of the Condor, Marco Zoror, who has uh, recently come out with this film uh, shot during the pandemic, uh, I think early 2021, before he was brought into Chad Stahelski's John Wick 4 which has uh, broken some records for the franchise, but we're, we're here to talk Condor. Welcome, Marco. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. There's some very obvious uh, old school Kung Fu influences. I know you uh, have spoken at length about your influ the influence that Bruce Lee has made on you. You can definitely see that here in your Guerrero character. Uh, yeah. Maybe even like the the evil twin brother character to some extent um mm. and there, there's like this prioritization um that that you have on the mentality of training which is very prevalent <clears throat> in a uh, fist of the condor and uh, that's something that a lot of old school kung fu did a lot of emphasizing the importance of mental and physical training I, i'm wondering if if that's something that you bring into like any project approaching the the mental training aspect of like going into a project uh tackling certain challenges which i'm sure that there's always a different set of challenges for for any film that you're making it's more to me than just a love letter there is something of a I would say like a personal statement here. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that, that this statement brings more than say other collaborations that you've had with Espinosa? Like, yeah, well, to be honest, like Fist of the Condor represents an honest expression of who I am as a martial artist and as a human being on that moment when we were in the middle of quarantine and when I needed to kind of, in a, in a way, rethink of my life and just look at where I was and thinking that it's going to be the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So basically you sit with yourself and you meditate and you just, it, it, this need of expression and on doing something honest, it was the only opportunity. It was like a unique opportunity to just do it and just do something that it doesn't, that it doesn't, that it's not contaminated with 
with objectives, with business, with no. Let's do something that is truly honest of what we are as filmmakers, as martial artists, as you know, with Ernesto as a filmmaker too, you know. So we just did this journey and this we started this movie with that idea. Like we need to stay honest. And and me as a martial artist, starting from a young, young age, inspired by well, my mother and, and Bruce Lee, it's like this is it. This is me as a martial artist. This, you know, I've done different styles. I train different things and I experiment mobility and flow. And then at the same time, there's a mental journey, psychological journey, you know, that you got to beat all these fears and you have your ego. And sometimes your mind tells you one thing and then you, how you learn from, to dominate your mind and how you learn to understand that you're not your mind, that there's something, that you're more than you just your mind. So all that, or that battle, inner battle, like how we can bring all this into the movie, you know, to kind of put it out there. It's like, if this is going to be my last movie or the last word that I'm going to do, because, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. It needed to be honest in every extent of our dimension as humans. Physical, like training, to put, talk about nutrition, talk about like the different way of training, talk about like show a different style or like my own way of training because I don't do Kung Fu, I don't do Karate, I don't do Taekwondo, I don't know. I train many doctrines, but I always move the way that I move. I'm, I'm from Latin America, receiving these different influences, watching these different movies. Okay, what will be, what will my Kung Fu movie look like? As uh, if I stay honest with myself, being inspired with all this beautiful like cinema and and with these artists and Bruce Lee, of course, you're always gonna see Bruce Lee because he was like the one that helped me find my way. You see, it's like a very personal project and it's a very particular. Like that's why I would love to continue this story because it's the it allows me to express myself honestly. You see. Is that um, what mainly brought you to create your own style, like for this, uh, the style of the Condor with your, uh, your history with mixed martial arts and like certain yes, different types it, it, of Exactly. Control? It was the need of, okay, I needed to name it and we name it through the Condor. And then we, of course, when we choose the Condor, then all scores, the positions and the movements of the arms start happening. But I've been training like this for years now. After my whole journey as a martial artist, start training different doctrines, I've been training lately a lot of mobility and flow and, and just flow through movements, you know? So that's kind of the way I, the, the, this character trains and the choreographies. You don't see any particular style, but you can see little things of different styles. You can see some Taekwondo kicks, you can see boxing, you can see, uh, you know a little bit of everything and then but at the same time it's not a style it's it's not a it's not karate it's not kung fu so that's why we it was the chance to kind of put okay this is who i am as a martial artist you see and that was the beautiful thing of this movie that ernesto was able to grab the, all these elements and kind of put it in this beautiful story and this book and create this ancestral thing and this story. So yeah, it was very, very cool how it, everything happens, you know? Yeah, there's a very different approach to uh, screen choreography in fighting versus real life fighting where um, screen choreography is very much drawn out because, you know, you want to see a longer fight, maybe like a one-on-one -on -one situation or uh, in real life fights are fairly short unless they're like a spectator sport uh, like an MMA or boxing or uh, wrestling that kind of thing which actually kind of leads into my next question here with all the choreographers and stunt teams that you've worked with uh, in the past say prior to to Condor and this might actually apply to John Wick have you have you noticed any differences in like those teams moving from like a low to a high budget production and like, have you found for yourself what you prefer in an action design team, like that would work with fight and stunt choreography, things that you liked, uh, things that you disliked or thought that you felt you could improve upon in working on Fist of the Condor doing the fight choreography for yourself? 
Mm. Yeah, well, the, it depends on the project. In Feast of the Condor, basically, it's me experimenting and and working with different talent because I, when I cast, I have the I can choose who I cast. So mm -hmm. I bring martial artists to have fun and to create this choreography based upon my skills and my view as a martial artist with their with their skills, right? Mm -hmm. So we kind of co-create. And we create this scenario where it's kind of, I'm going to attack you like this. Well, how you will react in a real fight. So boom, I attack and then they react and oh, that's cool. And then they try this. So it's like a co-creation, right? All the time. I like that. I like to do that in my movies. When you, when you work in a big movie and, you know, you have a team of people doing that for you. And sometimes, you know, it depends on the team, especially like in a, in a team like Chad or like John Wick, you know like he, this whole team like jeremy marinas is like mm. an amazing martial artist and they design all the fight scenes but then when the cast arrives you know they let you kind of you know hey this is the map but what can you do what's your uh, and then you kind of bring your character that's where you want to go maybe what about this and you show them and they adapt and they grab that technique and they make you they they, they guide you to what they need for the scene Mm. So it's pretty yeah. cool. Like they're 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 a cool process, and 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 I don't think it's one thing is better on the other. It's just a different. It's a, it's a different scenario. It's a different situation, you know. Mm. And I will. I love to work with teams like that because you learn a lot. I, I absorb everything how they work, and I always grab things. I'm looking. I grab things that then to apply to my movies, and then and to improve my work because. When the more people you work with and the more talent you're around, the more you absorb different things. One little thing here, one little thing here. You see how they work. Okay, now, oh, you know, I got an idea. To, and then, you know, you, you, it's, I, I, I love to be the student of life. You know, I love to always sit in the, in the student seat and, and mm -hmm. learn as much as I can in every experience that I have. You know, and I'm very yeah. thankful to be able to be on that set on, on the John Wick set and see how Chad work, how Jeremy work, how Keanu work, uh, how they approach things. And, you know, I'm all the time taking notes and see, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, this is cool. You know, it's like, it's like I'm just sit back and they just smile and, and enjoy, you know? Yeah. And, and that definitely goes into the philosophy of martial arts, which is learning from others, um, learning from even just like collaborators or rivals, where rivals is hardly a bad word in the martial arts world it's it's yes. all um it's collaborative to an extent where there's like a a healthy degree of not like competitiveness but just willing to to share information and even just like a sparring mm -hmm. session with someone like um like Ayel Mayer in Condor or yeah. um Keanu Reeves from John Wick even knowing that you wanted to cast Ayel for Condor, I'm sure he he probably surprised you in um in quite a few ways when sparring with him or working through the choreography with his yeah. with his style versus the style that you're kind of inventing here uh in Fist of the Of course, of course, of course. And that's the beauty of it. And and that's why for me it's very important when you're doing these type of movies that you honor and you you work with the people that can add to this, you know, and I believe that what Chad is doing is like, that's why I always say that Chad is changing the game in the industry because with the, with the John Wick, he's proving that, hey man, he, he started as a stand man. Mm -hmm. He did a long career, man. And he knows the struggle of this industry of being there and doing the work and hitting the ground and da, da, da. And then, and then, you know, and, and he putting his vision and his knowledge into this and teaming up with people and working with the best of the best. And now being able to all that experience, being the one that is picking up the shots and, and putting his vision in front of the camera and picking the cast, the cast. I need this guy. I need this guy. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're saying. And man, and he's proven four times not one, because everybody can go, oh, you do it one time, ah, you were lucky. Mm -hmm. The second time, okay. Oh, maybe your third time, no, no, no. And fourth, like, come on, man. 
Like, you know, this that's why for me, like he he is a before and after John Wick franchise in the industry. This is an eye opener for for the for all the big studios and the big people to go, oh, you know what? Look, if we want to get go into this game of making action and fighting and stuff like that, we better we better give the place to these people that they know what they're doing and give them the power to to do the way they want it and not just try to you know uh do it the way we think it is because this is the way and that's why fans love this franchise because yeah. he really fought for for making these movies the way his vision and of course he has the best partner you know, from like a uh, Keanu that he he loves the genre. He's another guy that he, he's very like passionate and he wants to really work hard and make the best possible. And so when you see these two guys working, you just sit back and enjoy, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and that's what we do. That's what I do in with Fist of the Condor in a smaller, really sm smaller scale. Mm -hmm. But the spirit behind it, I think, is the same. And it connects the two movies in a way. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. the same. It's, it comes from the same place. That's what I noticed the most about uh, Fist of the Condor was that it feels as uh, positively constructive as something like the John Wick franchise, where uh, obviously you don't have as many adversaries as any of the John Wick movies. But like, that's not the point, really. Uh, the point is your your character's journey and how each roadblock that comes up develops that character towards realizing what goal he has set for himself. And going back to to Chad uh, having this story history in stunt and fight choreography before starting to direct his own films, we're we're starting to see an uptick actually of mm -hmm. people who have uh, cut their teeth on. Uh, fight choreography, martial arts, and even stunt work that are now starting to direct behind the camera. So I guess tentatively, um, would you consider maybe taking the helm of like directing a feature? Hmm. Yeah, well, I would love to. You know, like I, right now, I'm I'm happy performing, but I, you know, I'm so passionate about it, and I I'll, I see myself doing it for sure. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know directing is a lot of work, and um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's already a lot of work just to star and write and do your own martial arts choreography for a film like this. Um, but I'm just saying a lot of us would be very excited if uh, you found the opportunity and the time to pick up something and uh, perhaps even the follow up to fingers crossed for uh, just of the Condor part two. I think a, a lot of us would be very happy to see if or when uh, you might be uh, willing to, to give it a shot. Um, yeah, well, no, Fist of the Condor 2, I want to do it for sure with Ernesto because I think we connect very good. Mm -hmm. And I cannot wait to prepare that fight scene between the two brothers and to discover who the real Fist of the Condor warrior is. Yes. And to show these two personalities colliding and fighting and to create that fight fight scene is going to be uh, I, I'm looking forward for that to be honest yeah it, it's it definitely has its challenges because you play both roles so um, do you think you would go back to uh, the body double that you worked with for for the first well for Fist of the Condor to like do some coverage shots yeah it could be but also I'm I'm I'll have to look for a couple because mm -hmm. We need to match the skills and and to find someone that to to can follow me with my size size is that's that's gonna be the challenge because usually I can get people that look like me but it's hard to find martial artists you know that on my side so that's gonna be a big challenge for them. <laughs> yeah but I, mean, I think a challenge well worth um, tackling and solving oh, definitely definitely. Um, I, yeah, I, I can already imagine how electric that that fight is going to be because the entire film of Fist of the Condor is pointing directly to this. So for people who have seen the film and are already huge fans of it, we're we're just like waiting with bated breath to see how this is going to look. 
there's there's this one more question I have, which goes back to like crafting fight scenes. And this this might be circumstantial for you, but um, what would you say would be like the most say crucial element of like a great cinematic fight scene between like the choreography, uh, the physical form and the performance or post-production things like editing yeah. or even just like the camera work? I think the, the number one thing is that the director uh, in this case that is doing the fight scene it's totally connected through the whole process mm-hmm. because we see in big studios or in some movies where the director delivers the movie then you have an editor then you have a producer then uh, and then the final uh, no, and you have a previous people team that do a previous then you have a director so the, the product gets uh, it's like the phone call uh game you know that game that the, that we play with kids oh, the, yeah, the, the, that the message fun. gets delivered differently and then it turns until the end is a totally different message it's mm-hmm. kind of the same thing it's like i i think to really accomplish this is to have a team that is in charge of that from the previous to the delivery of the film of the of the scene okay. because the vision of the director needs to be from the beginning so then that could be passed to production. So production can set up the production time, the logistic, the elements, all the production needs to accomplish that guy, that previous. So then you shoot that previous and then that goes to an editor that understands that previous and can guide himself through that previous. Then, you know, the director come jumps in and, 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 and adapt or whatever. And then the final result will come up you know that so that communication needs to be so cool and of course to cast the right people for the right parts because sometimes no matter what's your plan if you have a wrong performer that's going to limit maybe you have an amazing previous but then you have someone that cannot deliver so you need to change your adapt your angles you need to change your edit you need to change everything because you cannot shoot from this angle because that actor is not delivering you the action. And right. then it would change the whole dynamic. So, so if you do have a cast, then the previous, you should do it thinking who is playing that role to understand how limited you are to create this fight scene. Hmm. That's the, the, the ideal world scenario, you know, and that's how at least I could do that in my low budget movies because there's not much things that I need to consider. I just need to cast the people I want and I just would just shoot, you know. Uh, big movies sometimes, they run through a lot of like uh, politics and stuff. And, you know, so sometimes it's hard to accomplish that full, clean process, you know. Okay. So then the vision gets get lost through the process, you know. And of course, that's, what, that's exactly what doesn't happen in John Wick. John Wick and Chad... That's exactly what I'm telling you. He's in charge of everything. His view is from the beginning to the end of the movie. Mm. And that's why you see what you see. <laughs> yeah. That's why the movie is what it is, you know. There's something that I've I've noticed about uh the characterization of of Guerrero in Condor that also I noticed back in Mirage Man. There, there's a way that you approach your character in body language and the way that they move on the screen. With Guerrero, he's far more confident. Like we see him training, but he's been kind of like out of training for a little bit, but his form is still uh, very solid. But in Mirage Man, your your character is a bouncer for a strip club, a nightclub or something. He definitely has a little bit more of like a clumsy way of moving around that's not part of the fight choreography but it's a really interesting way to inform like how much growth needs to happen for the character both mentally and physically there's quite a few similarities from both mirage man and condor where it focuses on the training aspect the nutrition Mm -hmm. and just the mentality of i would say enacting justice in in different ways it seems almost just as personal, if not more, in Condor than it was in Mirage Man. 
And you could even say that your character in Condor is almost that like of a superhero too, um, mm. but just a little bit less uh, emphasis on it. From your earlier um, collaborations with Espinosa, is is that something that you've found is a really strong emphasis point showing a physical progression? Yeah. Well, the thing is that both the movies with Ernesto are all very personal. For example, Mirachman also, like those trainings and that nutrition and what I was doing there is what I was doing at that moment in my life as a martial artist. So we, with Ernesto, we have this luxury of being honest, of, of creating content that starts from me. And because we're friends since so, like we were born in the same day, we went to the same high school. Yeah. So when we engage in a project, the first thing he does is like, okay, well, this is going to be a superhero movie, like Mirage Man, right? But he knows his, he knows that I'm doing the character, so he knows me, and he, you know, and and then I, and then we come, we talk about my training, and I tell him what I'm doing, and da, da, da. so he always co-creates the character based on my reality on that moment, and that's the that's a beautiful thing, and yeah, with Mirage Man. Of course, it's always important for me as a martial artist to bring the physical aspect in the character development. Because as a martial artist, I'm physical. And sometimes with physical movements, I get in touch with my emotions. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I, you know, I like to understand how the character moves and how the character express himself physically. And that connects me such a very it's effective way to connect with even my feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, because I don't know. It's like that's how it works for me. It's like as a as a martial artist, I I connect a lot with movement. And yeah, and it it, it for me it works like that. I feel you know. In all the films that that I've seen you in from Espinosa, that definitely comes through, and it's honestly one of the most earnest depictions of um, like physical performance. I honestly haven't seen anything quite like it. Well, with YouTube being some of the only martial arts output from Chile, I have so much more hope and reverence towards sparking more um, small, low budget filmmakers and martial artists and fight choreographers to start working from the ground up like, like you two have. And yeah. it's, it's honestly just really inspiring to see. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. That's the point, man. It's a way of paying back, paying forward to like the people that inspired me and telling them, hey, man, whatever you, you know, your work is still here, you know, and this is thanks to you, you know, it's like we pay it forward, you know. Let's say you you have the the funds, you have the availability to start working on Fist of the Condor Part 2. I don't know, like next week or something uh mm -hmm. is is there a dream martial artist that you would love to work with as maybe like an adversary or uh, someone that you would work with on camera or even behind the camera mm -hmm. not to put you on the spot <laughs> yeah no but i will it will be ni nice to work with jackie chan mm. he's was he was one of the big inspirations for me you know i when I was a kid, Armor of God, I remember that movie inspired me so much. So it could be like a cool, like, you know, little scene. I would love to, you know, do it with, you know, as a martial artist, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the big inspirations, man. And perhaps you can just do a little Snake and Eagle Shadow reference. Yeah. Or... <laughs> <laughs> that would be very fun. Yeah. If any of you haven't already, you absolutely need to check out Fist of the Condor. Uh, it's currently streaming on Haya right now. And the Blu-ray from Wellgo USA is coming out soon. By the time this video is out, the, the Blu-ray will be out. So um, highly recommend you check it out. There'll be some behind the scenes too. It's going to be fun. Oh, great. Yes. I will be reviewing the Blu-ray uh, when I receive that. So I'm very, very eager to check that out. The more support we get for this release of Fist of the Condor, uh, the more possible it will be for the next chapter. Something that you said before that I caught on to, um, there was some idea for a comic book uh, for yes. Condor. We're already kind of doing some sketches for the comic book. So 
most likely the Feast of the Condor 2 happens, we'll start right away with the comic book to kind of have that ready before the movie release, you know? That would be incredible. I uh, There's not enough martial arts comic books out there that especially have not been worked on by people who work in martial arts. That that would be very, very interesting to see. And I'm, I'm already all in on it. So as soon as it's announced, let me know. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to, whatever platform it's coming on to, I'm, I'm already... I'm going to pre-order that as soon as I can. <laughs> cool. Uh, awesome, man. I just want to thank you again, Marco, for, for coming on and talking to me. I am a um, film programmer at the Grand Illusion Cinema in Seattle, Washington. And uh, we've already shown Fist of the Condor for a, a one-night-only screening. That's cool. And people really enjoyed it, especially the the final scene, well, the final fight between you and IL is so fun to see those two. Well, IL style going up against your Condor style, literally electric fight. So, awesome, <laughs> um, Thank you. thanks everyone for watching. And uh, this has been Celluloid Consummate. <laughs>